Okay, pieces do that. No one is vulnerable. Hmm, so this is uh, an interesting hand. The uh, points obviously is lacking, we've only got five points. Um, so typically with five points you'd be passing unless you had a preemptive bid. Um, and indeed we do have a preemptive bid, or rather we have the option to make a preemptive bid. Um, our spades are, are good in the sense of quality. They're not great, but they're good. Um, the, the thing that I really like about this hand is the two singleton. 7411 is a much better shape than 7222, just based on playing strength. Um, I would prefer it if the jack was in there. That would make it much more of a pure suit. Uh, however, that's not the case. So really, this jack of clubs is effectively not worth anything because it's a singleton. So the question is, are we happy to open three spades on, on a four count, effective four count? Um, I, I would open three spades for two reasons. Uh, well, well, three reasons. 7411, as I've discussed, good, good shape, not just, not just a seven card suit, but good shape outside as well. We are the first person to bid, which is good to preempt because you're preempting two opponents and only one teammate. So that's a two in three chance of preempting someone on the opposite side. And third thing is that we're not vulnerable. So all of these things would push me towards making an aggressive preemptive bid here. Um, I'd open three spades because we've got seven cards and spades. You could try and temper it by opening two spades, showing kind of a weak two. Uh, but I think with a seven card suit, I, that, that for me is sort of sufficient quality. So I, I would be opening three spades, albeit I accept that it is aggressive. Um, so that would be my bid. I'd start, start with a preemptive bid of three spades. Now to south, directly after the three spade bid. Well, South's got an easy bid, much easier than the East, no, no questions here. Um, we haven't got anywhere near enough points to double, not the right shape, no long suit, nothing. So, nice and easy pass. Now to West, responding to three spades. This normally is about how many spades you have. <laughs> uh, none. So this is, this is basically the nightmare hand opposite a preemptive bid from your partner. Preempts are made on a, on a preemptive assumption of the level of the fit. There's seven cards in spades here. There's an average of two spades in everyone else's hand. So therefore, seven plus two is nine. So you bid for nine tricks. That's the theory of a preemptive bid. You're preemptively bidding to the level of the fit. Um, we are all too aware, as, as Wes, we actually know how many spades we have. And we don't have any, which means the level of the fit is seven plus zero, which is seven, obviously. And seven means we should be bidding one spade, not three. So, we, our partner is currently two levels too high in spades. This means we must pass, we must get out. When you're in a problem, the do not dig. You, you, when you're in a hole, don't dig, everyone knows that saying. So if we were to bid, let's say, four diamonds, going, I don't like spades, I like diamonds, and then they bid four spades because they, un undoubtedly, they won't have any diamonds. You're just making the problem worse. So opposite a preemptive bid, you add up how many trumps you have, and you bid for that level. So in this instance, we want to bid one spade. So what that means is we actually want to bid minus two spades. That is how right pass is. We need to decrease the level by two. So pass is so the right bid here. Um, yes, I accept our partner probably won't be making three spades, but we don't want to dig. So therefore, pass and get out. Uh, and now to north. Someone must have all the points, and here they are. So we've got uh, 20 points in total, 4 3 3 3, perfectly flat. Um, obviously, this preemptive bid has given us a problem. If we were the opening bidder, we'd open two no trumps, showing 2022, 20, off we go to whatever is our correct contract. In this instance, um, we can't open two no trumps, obviously, because someone's opened a preemptive bid in front of us. We've got a difficulty here because we haven't got a long suit to bid. Strictly speaking, we haven't got the correct shape to double. We would like fewer spades to, to be making a takeout double. And not only that, takeout double would sort of underrepresent our number of points. Um, double, really, you only need an opening hand ish. So we know we've obviously got a much better hand than that. So obviously, pass is the wrong bid. It's a choice between double or, I think, punt three no trumps. Three no trumps basic, on the basis that your partner will have a couple of points, let's say five ish and we will be able to make three no trumps just on the sheer weight of our high card points. But this is a guess, and the reason we're having to guess is because of the preemptive bid from East. We, we've, we've got to just take a punt, really. If you double and partner bids, let's say, four clubs or four diamonds, we're going to have to raise that to five of a minor, because we just are, because of our number of points. And then we probably wish we were in three no trumps anyway. The only time double would, would benefit us is if partner has exactly five hearts, well, or five or more hearts, I suppose, um, and we can play in four hearts instead of three no trumps. 
but we don't know that and of course we're having to guess here so I personally would take a punt at three no trumps the idea behind this is if there's an average of seven points here we've got 20 so that's 27 which means there's 13 between these two hands so each of these hands has an average of six and a half points so therefore it's fairly safe to assume our partner has around five points um, so that we can make three no trumps because we've got 20 we only need five ish from our partner and even then we might make it with fewer than 25 points if our partner has five clubs or five diamonds where we can actually have a running suit going um, so I would take a shot at three no trumps but I accept that is a bit of a punt but I can't see any other better bid so that's what I would do okay so everyone passed out the three no trumps and East is now on lead to three no trumps obviously East is the one who preempted. Um, I can't see any reason to not lead a spade here. I accept that North must have a spade stop for three no trumps. But for me, it looks like the only opportunity we've got of taking this contract off. They might just have the king of spades. Our partner has an entry and can give us a spade and we can take them off, potentially. Albeit, that might be somewhat optimistic. Um, so I, I would lead a spade. Normally, you would lead fourth card down, so that would be the eight. But in this instance, we actually have a sequence. This is known as an internal sequence. We've got a big card, and then we've got a sequence. Um, it still counts as a sequence lead. So when you have on a 10-9 like this, it's actually correct to lead the 10 and not 4th down. I do accept that the 8 is equivalent to the 10. So if you had led 4th down, that is basically the same thing as leading the 10. The only slight difference is that our partner has more info with the 10. When we lead the 10, we're denying the jack and we're promising the 9. Our partner should know that we wouldn't open a preemptive bid at the 3 level with only 10-9. So they should know we have an honour higher than the 10 as well, just based on kind of inference that we wouldn't be that crazy to open three spades with only a 10 high suit. So this denying the jack and promising the 9, we've probably got something like queen 10 9, king 10 9, or ace 10 9, something, something in that region. Um, but I'm leading a spade because I don't know what else to do. So this is the card I'd leave, top of an internal sequence. Okay, now goes the dummy. Okay, so we've seen that dummy. Obviously, we, had, we took a bit of a punt bidding three no trumps, so it's nice to see our partner has seven points, which was roughly what we were expecting. So with 27 points, we would expect to be, well, certainly have a good chance of making three no trumps. Um, the only thing I would, I would kind of comment on before we look at each individual suit, etc., is that both hands are completely flat, 4-3-3-3 and 4-3-3-3. This often leads to difficulties because you... In no trumps, it's nice to have a long suit to, to run at. Um, in this instance, we don't really have a long suit. The best suit, of course, is clubs, because we have four each. But r really, we're not going to have a long suit to run at, so we're going to need tricks just up based on the sheer weight of points. Um, so a good, good idea when you, when you see your dummy in no trumps is to count your top tricks between the two hands and then look at where you think you're going to go for your extra tricks. So, looking from left to right, from, uh, from dummy's perspective, we've got one top trick in diamonds, the ace. We've got no top tricks in spades because we are missing the ace. Now, I know we will make tricks in spades, but we are missing the ace, so we can't ta count top tricks there. We've got three top tricks in, in hearts. Quite annoying that we don't have an extra heart in either hand so that we can enjoy the fourth heart because we have all the top, top five hearts, but we can only play three of them because the three opposite three. And in clubs, we have one top trick. So that's one, three is four, one is five. So we have five top tricks and we need nine to make our contract. That would imply we were in some difficulty here because we need four extra tricks. Now with regards to extra tricks, um, there's a slim chance of an extra trick in diamonds. If the king queen are both here, the jack might present itself as a trick. There's a good chance of spade tricks. Once the ace is gone, we will have two spade tricks. No chance of extras in hearts because we've got the top three. And there's a strong chance of extras in clubs. The reason the clubs are the best chance really is because we have four clubs and four clubs so based on our length the opponents only have five between them so if we can rid their clubs of them we'll at least make one extra trick uh, just based on the sheer length of our clubs and we might make another extra trick because of the queen of clubs might be finessing if the king of clubs is on the right hand side it, the, the club finesse might succeed so from an extra trick kind of perspective maybe one in diamonds probably not None in hearts, so really the red suits aren't looking too good. The spades, we will make extra tricks, but we don't need to create those extra tricks because the opponents are going to do it for us because that's their suit. The clubs is where the extra tricks lo are looking like, and we need to go after them ourselves. So the clubs is the suit I'm going to look to play on. Um, all too aware, of course, that spade tricks will eventually come out in the wash. Um, if we can make an extra couple of tricks in clubs, we'll make an extra couple of tricks in spades by force. Our top tricks of five will have then gone to nine. Two extra tricks here, two extra tricks here. 
This will happen by force. These clubs will need something nice to happen. The king of clubs finessing, the clubs breaking, or a combination of the two. Given that I want to play clubs from the table, and I strongly suspect, slash know, that the ace of spades is on the left, if you just count your spades quickly, three spades in dummy, three spades in hand is six, they open three spades, promising seven, means this hand is void in spades, if we trust their bidding. So this hand looks like he's got ace, ten, nine, eight of spades, leading the ten top of a sequence, so that would all add up. I think we want to win the lead in the dummy, knowing that this hand hasn't got the ace of spades, so play the queen and win, so that we can take the club finesse now. We could win the lead in hand, cross to a heart, and then take the club finesse, but there's no real reason to use a heart entry when we can use the Queen of Spades as an entry now. So I'd be playing the Queen of Spades at trick one, fully expecting it to win, because I know, quote-unquote, know that the Ace of Spades is on the left. And then I'm going to look to play the club to take a finesse in the hope the King of Clubs is on the right, and see what happens. Okay, so, as expected, West is void in spades, so they've got to discard something. Um, the only thing I would definitely keep protected is the King to four clubs, just because that looks useful against Dummy's four-card club suit. So you could discard a low heart, or you could discard a low diamond. Depending on your discard system here, and depending on whether you actually think partner's going to get the lead or not, would probably sway you. I personally would, would probably throw a diamond, just in case Declare is looking for a heart on it, and we then deny it by showing low discouraging or high discouraging, depending on what you play. It uh, doesn't look to me as if our diamonds are ever going to come in, because we haven't been led a diamond, and we're never going to really get the lead enough times to get the diamonds going. So I would discard a low diamond, and or a high diamond, depending on what, what discarding system you're playing. Um, I'm going to play the two, because I play low equals like, but obviously you might have different dis discarding systems. So we discard the diamond, and declare who's going to play small, the queen having won on the table, which was the plan. So now we've won the lead on the table, we're going to look to turn our attention to where our extra tricks are coming from, which is of course clubs. Um, so we're going to take the club finesse. Low club, they should play low. We play the queen. 50-50 shot, slightly better than 50-50 because it's likely more points are on our right than our left, but not, not necessarily, depending on what they're pre-minted on. And the Queen of Clubs gets a rather interesting sight of the Jack of Clubs from the pre -emptor. This is almost certainly a singleton club. Why would they be playing the Jack otherwise? It's really unlikely they're playing the Jack from, from Jack X or something similar. So the Queen of Clubs, having dropped the Jack, is it's almost certainly a singleton club. So I'm immediately suspecting King Nine of Clubs on my right here. The jack's dropping is actually very useful, though, because we have the 10 on the dummy. So the club finesse worked and the jack dropped, so things have gone well there in the sense... Well, the clubs haven't broken, but the jack dropped, which is very useful. So now the 10 of clubs is a threat. I'm strongly suspecting the remaining clubs are on the right. So there's two ways to approach this. We could cross the dummy and then lead clubs from the dummy. Um, interestingly, because we are missing the 9, the, the, uh, the right-hand opponent can always guarantee themselves of a club trick. If we lead the 10 they'll play the king, we play the ace, and their nine is now a trick. If we lead low, they can play the nine, forcing our ace, and their king is now a trick. So because they have the nine of clubs, um, they're actually guaranteed a club trick. The safest way to do this, and to not use entries, is to play a low club to the ten. Um, a psychological way where you might succeed is um, low heart to dummy, and then lead a club and hope they don't insert the nine. But they, they, they should do if they're switched on. So I'm going to play the, the safest way, which is a low club. They're going to discard something, probably a heart, given that they might have a chance with the spade suit. They're thinking that anyway. Again, it depends on your discarding system here. I'd be discarding high to say I don't have an honour, but again, it doesn't matter really. Now we need to play the 10. Uh, if they play the 8, we'll lose to the 9. So play the 10. And they can win the King of Clubs. As such. We had, to, we had to lose a club in that scenario, even wherever we leave them, as long as the defenders are not being silly and letting us have free tricks by ducking when they shouldn't be, etc. Now you can see, the clubs were as we expected, they're 1 and 4. We know the 9 of clubs is on the right, so we've now got a finessing position against that 9. We have the 8 and the 7, the 9 slots nicely in there. So as long as we lead clubs from the table, we can now take two more club tricks. West is on lead though, so they'd like to lead a spade back to their partner. Of course they can't, because they never started with any. Um, so they've got to decide, are they switching to diamonds, their suit, or are they switching to hearts, passive, trying to give the lead away? Given that their partner's just discarded the nine of hearts, which in my system says I don't like hearts, they would probably think that the heart is fairly safe. Um, they're not finessing their partner of the queen or king or something like that. Um, so they could, could be passive, or they could be active. An active lead would be switching to the king of diamonds, hoping to set their diamond suit up. 
Now, I suspect a lot of people would want to lead the King of Diamonds, but this actually reveals where the King Queen of Diamonds are to declare it. So this only really works if your partner has the Ace of Diamonds, very unlikely, or the Jack of Diamonds, somewhat likely. Um, if Declarer has Ace Jack of Diamonds, which is the case, by leading the King, you're actually revealing the Diamond Finesse position for them, so you're going to give them an extra trick. So the best defense here is to switch to a heart, being completely passive and trying not to give anything away. Um, I'm going to say the defender does that because then that gives me the hardest time as Declarer, but I understand that it, some defenders may well switch to the King of Diamonds here, and if that were the case, Declarer can then trap the remaining Queen of Diamonds with the Ace Jack, so that actually gives the Declarer an extra trick. So I'm going to say they don't do that because it helps me. So assuming they switch to a heart, which is the most passive thing they can do, we want to win on the dummy to finesse these clubs. The nine of clubs is still on our right. So I will play low, they play something low, and we can win the ten or jack, as such. And now the lead's in the right place to play those clubs correctly. So you can lead the eight and, and pin the nine, or you can lead low to the seven. Because we have the eight and the seven, both, both are fine. Interestingly, if we add the 8 and the 6, if this was the 6, not the 7, the 8 would get covered by the 9 and 8, and then they would have the winning 7. Or, low would get the 7 and 8, and they would have the winning 9. So it's very important, actually, that we have the 7 and not the 6. Very interesting that it's come right down to those low pips. So, let's say we leave the 8. If they cover the 9, we kill it, and we have the 7 as a winner. If they don't cover the 9, we win the 8. So they can't win. Um, it, does, it honestly doesn't matter. Let's say they do that. So we do that. They discard something, again, probably a heart, because they're not interested. And we have managed to play those clubs for only one loser. That was through some good fortune. The king of clubs was in the right-hand side. The jack of clubs dropped singleton, so we knew how to play those clubs. We maximised our chances and our tricks there by knowing how the clubs were laying. So now we've actually got, we've got our extra tricks. We've got the one extra trick in spades at trick one, and we've got three extra tricks here. Oh, sorry, two extra tricks here. So we need one more extra trick. That will guaranteed come from spades. We get rid of the ace of spades, and we've got another winner. So we've got four tricks currently. Five, six, seven, eight. They're all winners. So we need one more trick to make our contract. We could try something rather cheeky in diamonds, and in fact that probably wouldn't cost us, because the defenders are most likely to be... Uh, to be trying to get rid of our spades anyway. So really, there's two routes now. We play a safe line, play a low spade to the king or jack, getting rid of the ace, and then winning the other one. Or we play a low diamond, trying to do some skullduggery in diamonds to generate an extra trick. Being greedy myself, I probably would attempt the diamonds, expecting not much success, but actually being rewarded in this instance because both diamond numbers are on the right-hand side. Low diamond gets played. This defender does very well to duck diamonds. A lot of defenders here would do something known as splitting honours. Queen gets rid of the ace, now my king is a winner. That's the psychological thinking. The best play is to play low and not give declarer any information about what's going on. By playing the queen or king, you're playing high in second seat. That is almost always someone with queen and king, because they're trying to force. So the correct play here is low. Now I know, because I, as declarer, I can see the defender's cards, I know I could win the 9 or jack here. And you're thinking, well, if I played the queen or king, they wouldn't have been able to win the 9 or jack. But declarers don't know that. They might then go, ooh, I'm not sure about this. They ducked pretty quickly. Maybe the queen or king's here. Maybe I need to play the 9, do I need to play the jack, or shall I just take my ace? So this is the best psychological play. The queen or king guarantees a trick, but gives away the diamond suit entirely. Interestingly, the best odds from this perspective, from a declarer's perspective, with ace-jack-9, the best odds is the 9. Uh, you're playing for this person to have the 10 and to have another honour. As it happens, they have absolutely everything, king, queen, and 10. So I can't go wrong, but the 9 is the best odds. Jack relies on queen and king here, the 9 relies on the 10 here. So the 9 is a better odds perspective. Um, you also need one of the honours with the 10 here, because you're going to refinesse in a minute. So we play the 9, we expect this to lose to the queen or king or the 10, but as it happens, the nine wins. So the greedy line of playing an extra trick in diamonds, playing for an extra trick in diamonds, is immediately rewarded because everything is, is on the right place. If this hand had risen with an honour, we play the ace, we go back to the dummy, we play another diamond towards our jack, knowing they must have the other honour, so we get the extra trick that way anyway. So they sort of can't win, really, because they're in the right place. So we win that extra trick in diamonds. Now the greed must stop, unfortunately. We can't get another trick in diamonds because the king-queen we'll get rid of the jack, and therefore we only have one more trick in diamonds. So now we've got to take our tricks. Play the king of spades, getting rid of the ace of spades, and then we must win the lead, and we've got the rest of the tricks, barring this diamond. If they take the ace of spades, good, we've got jack of spades as a winner. If they don't take the ace of spades, don't play the jack, otherwise they'll have lots of winning spades. Uh, most defenders now will play the ace of spades, 
which we lose. Um, oops. And they, they discard something. It's completely irrelevant what they do now. And then they continue spades because they've got no option, like so. And now we have the rest of the tricks. The jack of spades, king, queen of hearts with the ace, the ace of clubs and the ace of diamonds. The only trick we're going to lose is this jack of diamonds at the end. This hand will keep on to the king, queen of diamonds because they've got nothing else to hold. So we're going to take those five tricks plus the five we already have, which is ten. We made one extra trick because we were greedy in diamonds. We could have took our safe nine. Once we'd established the clubs, we could have took our safe nine. I was greedy for a ten. And it worked.